millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. Nerdwallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Have you ever thought, life would be so much better right now if someone just magically Venmoed me a bunch of cash? I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't turn it down if somebody wanted to do that. But since our fantasy of this magical money tree might not be a reality, here's a little bonus episode about smart money moves you can take right now. You're listening to Millennial Money with award-winning money expert and serial entrepreneur, Shauna Compton-Game, where we flip the script on the old-school approach to everything your parents never taught you about money. Each week, Shauna creates a safe space by talking with special guests from around the world about money wellness, entrepreneurship, traveling like a boss, and what makes millennials tick. Unique stories, trailblazing perspectives, tips, tricks, and everything there is to know about money. Find it all here as you uncover your money story and unlock the life you want to live. Pretty cool, right? Here's Shauna, money expert, Indiana Hoosier, and burger aficionado. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance, so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. The most common question I get asked is, what does it take to be a millionaire? And first, I've got a few things to say about that. Millions of dollars, it might be your magic money number, It might not be your magic money number. You see, I believe that you need to first figure out what kind of life you really want to live, like really figure it out and put some sort of visuals around it. Visualize where you live, visualize your job, visualize what you're doing for hobbies, visualize who is in your life. The more you can visualize this, the easier it is to create a money system to come around and help you with that vision, fund that vision. Maybe it's millions of dollars, but maybe you don't need that. So my thought is always, why get stuck on a million dollar salary or a million dollar number if that's not the life you want to live anyway, if that's not the number that it's going to take to bring that vision to life. So my question to you is, what is your magic money number? That's really, really important to figure out because again, that's going to give you the roadmap to what you need to earn, to what your expenses should be, to what you should invest in, to where you should live, you name it. Like that magic money number is going to give you so much information. Also, being a millionaire doesn't mean you don't have money troubles. Look at the current situation we're in. There are many millionaires who are struggling right alongside the rest of us. So I want you to replace in your head that idea that millions equals no worries, men. I tried to do my best Bob Marley voice, but that was a really terrible, terrible impersonation. (laughs) I'm horrible with impressions. 
no worries, man. Okay, I can't do it. I give up. Anyway, you get where I'm going there. And also, what you can do is some of those boring, non-sexy money foundational elements that millionaires use to better their own money situation, you can use those too. Those are free and available to you. So don't get stuck on the fancy money things, like the fancy investments, the buying and flipping a million homes and whatever it may be. It's the boring, non-sexy money elements That is the place that millionaires play in because that is the place that sustains you and propels you forward. It's not that they don't take risk. It's not that they don't invest in things. None of that is is out of the realm, but they really understand the foundational elements of money and they use them wisely. So let's talk about some smart money moves Now that we've kind of thrown out that idea of we don't have to be a millionaire, but maybe we can think like one. Maybe we can use some of the tricks. And it's not that it's going to get us suddenly to a million dollars. Maybe it will. I don't know. But it puts us in the frame of mind of thinking, if they can do it, I can do it. If they can be financially sound, I can be financially sound, right? That's what I really want you to take away from this episode. So you can have the same credit score as a millionaire. Let's do a little credit score refresher. So credit scores range from 300 to 850 here in the US and a score of 740 plus wins. Why does it matter? Well, the better your credit score, the lower the interest rate on lots of things, cars, homes, credit cards, any type of loan that you have, you'll get a lower interest rate with a better credit score. So it's just going to save you more money on the stuff you buy. Why would you want to buy that $30,000 car and pay $60,000 because you have a lower credit score versus $50,000 because you have a better credit score? So thinking like a millionaire means if I can better my credit score, I can save more money. Saving more money means I can use that money more efficiently to grow me in the direction I want to grow. See how that goes? Another thing I want to say is if you've got a credit score of 740 plus, you do not need to kill yourself to try and get a credit score over 800. You can get the same great interest rates at 740 plus that someone can at 800 or 825. So I don't want you to get in this place where you feel like you have to get the 850 credit score. So let's talk about a couple other things. How can you better your credit score? So the two things that can better your credit score quickest is paying your bills on time. That is 35% of your credit score. Right now, if you're having trouble paying your bills, call your lenders. Try to do everything in your power to have them not report late fees on your credit report. That's going to keep your credit score really strong. The second factor is something called credit utilization, which is 30% of your credit score. And what that means is the amount of credit available versus the amount of credit used. So you want to keep that number to 30%. So if let's for say, for example, I have $1,000 available credit on a, a credit card, I want to use no more than $300, so 30% of that $1,000. You see how that works? Sometimes getting another credit card actually helps your credit score because it widens that gap between credit available and credit used, and that could be a really good thing. There are lots of resources out there to help you manage and better your credit score. You can use apps like Credit Sesame and Credit Karma. I use my FICO, myfico.com. And I pay for it monthly, but it is the most accurate score I've found. I have found that some of the free apps do not give me the best credit score. It's good for me to just stay on top of what's happening in my credit report. But when I want to go buy a car or I want to go buy a house or something like that, I want to know what my credit score really is, what the lenders are going to be using, because then I can back up a couple months before and think about are there ways that I can better my credit score. All right, number two, number two smart money move. You can leave a million dollars to someone you love. Yes, we're talking about life insurance. Yes, I know it's not your favorite subject, but stick with me here for just one second. You can buy a policy and pay for it monthly, and it might cost less than your takeout bill last week. 
So depending on your age, depending on how healthy you are, you could get a a policy for $100,000, $500,000, even a million dollars and have it cost less than your takeout bill. So I want you to think about who is financially dependent on you. Is it your your spouse? Is it your partner? Is it your child? Is it your parents? Is there someone financially dependent on you? If the answer is yes, then you might want to check out life insurance. Comes in lots of different flavors. Term is usually the most approachable, I would say, just because it's less expensive. You can buy it 10 years, 20 years, 30 year term. It's like renting. So once that term is up, your life insurance will essentially go away and you receive a death benefit, not you, your beneficiary. So whoever is financially dependent on you that you're leaving this money to. And there are lots of companies like Policy Genius, Haven Life, Bestow. There's a lot of them now. They're all online and you can apply online and within minutes, you can have a really good indication of whether you're going to get approved for your life insurance. So again, I want you to think about this when you're young and healthy. And this is a a smart money move where we're covering a financial risk. Yes, it's not sexy. It's not fun. But it's a really smart way to take care of people that you love. So just something to think about. Number three, you can actually spend your entire paycheck. I know you're thinking, what? What? Shauna, that's crazy. How is that a smart money move? Well, by using every dollar that comes into your bank account, you are efficiently managing your money, just like a millionaire would. So there are a couple ways you can do this. One, I am a huge fan of money dates, whatever you want to call them. It's picking a time, calendaring a time every week where you spend, it, it takes me maybe 20 minutes at the most, sometimes 30 minutes, but really once you get in the habit of doing this, it goes really fast. And You can actually see where your money is being spent and you can make tweaks week by week rather than getting to the end of the month and having a freak out panic attack because some expense came up or you're over budget or whatever it may be. So staying in your money each week keeps you in the driver's seat and then you just look ahead to the week ahead and say, okay, what's coming up? Where am I going to spend money? Do I have extra money for savings? Like what am I doing with my money, right? You're creating this action plan every single week. So it's putting this extra cash to work. Can I put extra cash towards paying off debt or into savings or into investing? It's thinking like a millionaire. It's not letting any money go to waste or go down that money drain pipe that exists for all of us, literally all of us, when we just leave money in our bank account. Money just seems to evaporate. I don't know. I don't know if you've had this phenomenon, I imagine you would because I think it happens to all of us. And suddenly you think you're supposed to be left with, I don't know, $500 each month. And and you're like, wait a minute, I'm having to dip in my savings. This is nuts. How is this even happening? So by spending and allocating every dollar that comes in from your paycheck wisely, you're just routing your money in the direction it needs to go. And that is a really smart way to think about your money. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. Gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. 
They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful, ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, Honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E A R N I N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T A L K A N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash T O S for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. Hey there. Did you know Baker's always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Baker's app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Baker's today. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. All right, number four. I call this always being on the lookout. So part of the money date is to find ways, again, to better allocate your cash. So at least two times a year, I check the following things. Car insurance. Am I on the best plan? Am I on the best plan for the best price? Two, renter's insurance or homeowner's insurance, whichever applies to you. Is this enough coverage? Again, is this the best plan? Am I making sure that my belongings are covered? My cell phone plan, cable, internet bill. I call these companies twice a year. I swear to you, every time I end up saving money or moving on a better plan or getting a better plan, the whole idea is these companies change plans very frequently. There's always a better plan or lower price. And you want to make sure that based off your usage of these things, you're on the best plan. So you may have a cell phone plan where it has all of these extra minutes and you're paying for all of these extra minutes and you're not even using them. So why even stay on that plan? What if you could bump it down and save yourself 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it may be a month? So I do this at least two times a year. And then also credit card interest rates. We're in a really low interest rate environment right now. Have you called your credit card company and said, hey, is there a better interest rate I can get right now? Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes it's yes. But even if you if you knock it down a quarter percent or a half a percent and you have debt on that credit card, it will help you pay it off faster. So just a couple of things to think about. I'm always thinking about, am I paying too much? Can I take that savings and put it towards a goal that you have. So you are in the driver's seat of your cash and always be on a lookout. That is a really smart money move. Can you launch a side hustle or a side business? I mean, I don't think anyone ever left this earth thinking, you know what? I just had too much cash. I'm not sure that anyone has ever had that thought in their mind. So extra cash is a good thing. Extra cash for all of us. Again, 
start of this episode, if I Venmoed you X amount of dollars, I'd probably think that you wouldn't turn it down, right? Because because cash is good. So I've got a few side hustles. It's just extra money that that comes in. But you can do this in real tangible ways, especially right now. Is there a skill that you have or a talent or something you can teach? There are lots of ways to earn extra money. And you don't have to have the ambition of turning it into a full-time gig. That does not have to exist. It can just be in the realm of extra cash. It's a great way to get out of debt, but also a great way to build up investing or launch that real estate empire you want to have or buy a house for you or for a family member. So extra cash just helps you propel those goals forward in sometimes really powerful ways. And there are lots of people, when I was coming up with this list, I was like, okay, I'm going to just pare it down to a few people. But there are lots of people to get inspired by. There are podcasts Uh, side hustle school with Chris. He's on an upcoming episode, podcast episode. Uh, Side hustle pro with Nikayla. She was on this show earlier this year. Smart passive income with Pat. There are so many different podcasts you can listen to to be inspired by. But um, I, I just want you to learn from people who have done this before because I know that I spent a lot of time kind of spinning my wheels around when it came to side hustles. And then I was like, all right, well, I just need to actually like listen to the people who've done this and follow what they've done. <laughs> so that is definitely something to think about. And the last one is is mindset, working on your mindset. I know I talk about it a lot, but I talk about it a lot for really specific reasons. You're not going to win at every investment. You're not always going to make the best decisions when it comes to your money. That's just that's just a fact. So you have to learn to let go of the idea of perfection and failure so you can stay focused on a healthy money mindset. So many of us stay spun up in the money mistakes that we've made. You can probably, when I'm just saying this, probably a few of them are flashing in your head. Things that you wish you hadn't done, money mistakes that uh, you play over and over in your head. And the problem is that those money mistakes, they keep you stuck in a place of scarcity. And we need to take ourselves from scarcity to a place of abundance. And it's way easier said than done. Making that shift is really hard because we've spent however many years that you are old on this earth um, (laughs) basically getting programmed about ways to think, act, and feel about our money. And the idea of, of changing those takes real effort. It takes serious effort for you to stop the train wreck of thoughts in your head and change them into something positive. And I only know this for, well, for two facts. One, I know it personally because it has been my struggle over the years of uh, changing the way that I think, changing lies that are in my head, changing things that I know aren't true, but they just keep playing over and over like a broken record in my head. But I also know this from working with hundreds and hundreds of people who struggled with money worries, no matter how much money they made, they all sort of shared this same issue. It's not even an issue. It's just, it's just our minds. It's just the way our minds work. We tend to focus on the negative things. And then particularly when it comes to money, there is this idea of perfection out there that you have to check all these things off the list. And if you haven't checked all these things off the list, then you're not perfect or you're not quote unquote doing things right or you're not making the best decisions. And that's just BS. So I want you to throw out the idea that no matter what you've done that hasn't worked, that doesn't mean that you've failed. So smart money moves to think like a millionaire is to work on that mindset piece and to will yourself into a a new way of thinking, into a new way of doing things, into a new way of, of thinking about your money. And one of the most proactive things that you can do every day is set a little goal for yourself. Could be a tiny little thing. Maybe you just want to look at whatever interest rates on your credit card. Maybe you want to push yourself to call that lender, see if you can get a lower interest rate. Maybe it's setting money dates and you're going to commit to doing it at least 
four weeks in a row. And then you're going to say, hey, did anything change with my money? Maybe it's that you're going to have that conversation with your partner or your family member, whoever it may be around money, and you're going to talk about something that's vulnerable to you. It could be a little thing, it could be a big thing, but just set a daily goal that's going to keep you focused and keep you moving forward in the right direction. There is nothing too big. Your debt is not too big. The Whatever it is you're struggling with with your finances, whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing, nothing is too big. You can change it, but the change starts to come with daily action. And another thing is don't be afraid to ask questions or find a mentor or try new things. We're humans. That's how we grow. So reach out. So I hope this episode inspired you. These are some simple money moves that anyone can make, no matter your age, your income, where you live, your name, whatever it is. We can all do these things. So I want you to put it on a shirt every day that says, if they can do it, I can do it. And focus on one thing a day or a week or a month, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. So as always on this podcast, we are actively working to change the language around money to help everyone unlock the life they want to live. Now that you are part of this movement, it's up to all of us to invite people in. So share this episode with someone that you think needs to also work on some smart money moves. Invite them in so we can all talk about money in a new, fun, and fresh way. Thanks for checking out this episode of Millennial Money. For all the BTS on today's episode, check out the show notes. Oh, and while you're at it, share this episode with a friend, share it with your coworkers, even share it with that cute barista who gets your name correct every time. Money mindfulness is something we could all use a little help with. So why keep all this knowledge to yourself? Remember, sharing is caring. See you back here in a few days with a fresh new episode. 